Shalom, 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 Shabbat, Shalom, 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 Shabbat, Shalom. Rest from the time that is tiptoed around. Rest from the day that is done and unwound. Rest for the mind that has guided your soul. Blessed be He who has made your life whole. Rest from the wind that has blown you astray. Tangle your words as if love went away. Rest for the lives that are no longer near. All but tonight, they will all come to hear. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shabbat, shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome and blessings to you all. We are so glad to be here. We are thankful that you are here as well. We made it. We are so blessed to have this day set apart that we honor the guard and that we can fellowship with brothers and sisters today. So we're so thankful for that. And I'm going to say it. This is for Wirewool live from Middle Tennessee. It's Shabbat night live. We are Fiery Faith Ministries and we're just excited to be here as always I think last week I was solo, so it's good to have my partner back with me. We've got another good portion to read, to discuss. We hope that you've already read the portion. We're just going to be breaking it down and sharing some insights and some uh, looks into the various pieces and parts of this portion. So we're just so thankful that you are joining us this evening. Please share your comments, any insights. We will post them up as well as we go along. Let's go ahead and start by welcoming those gathering with us so far. Shabbat Welcome. Shalom, Mona. Shabbat Shalom to you. And Jamie, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, sister. And, and hallelujah. Judy. It is Shabbat Night Live. Shabbat love Night it. Live. Judy came up with it. All right. I <laughs> love that. Sherry, Shabbat Shalom to you. Shabbat Welcome. Shalom, sister. And, and yes. wire wool. Another week to remember the faithfulness of Yahuwah. Praise Yah for that. Hallelujah. So important. We don't lose sight of that with the distractions and the, the chaos of the world. Sometimes it is easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. And we're just so thankful for everything that Yah provides in our lives on a daily basis. That's right. And the Coletti's Welcome. Shabbat, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So wonderful to be amongst brethren. Amen. Amen. And HG, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. So glad Welcome. to see you. All right. And that's awesome. Show, show so far, far, so, so good. good. And we will be blowing the show far in just a moment. So get yours ready. George, Welcome, Shabbat Welcome, George. Shalom. Glad you are here. Family, blessing. Oh, you went oh, too fast. Sorry. Blessings and healing. Great to be. Hallelujah. Amen. And y'all reigns. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Y'all reigns. And Brandon, Brandon, welcome. Shabbat shalom. God bless to you Yah as well. God bless you. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, we've got a few more. Rachel. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom, shalom. From Minnesota. And Sonia. Sonia. Good to see you, sister. Shabbat shalom. Right. Pray you got are a, well. A new name here. W Y L H. Shabbat shalom. Glad that you are here. Thanks for joining us. And Yanellis. Shabbat shalom. 
looking forward to trying and your Andrea. bread recipe yes, soon. Yes, I you for am. for posting that. After Pesach, I will be trying the, the bread recipe. Amen. Shabbat shalom, and welcome, sister. Andrea. Glad you were here. Mm -hmm. Anyone else out there, whether you're in the chat or not, welcome. We are glad that you are here. We are. As always, we're going to start with our shofar, a prayer, and a song of praise. So get your shofar ready. If you have one, a tambourine, a loud holler, whatever it takes, whatever you need. You can tell we're from Tennessee. A loud holler. <laughs> I prefer the shofar, but it's not always easy to get a, a joyful sound out of it. So here we go. Mikael, so Welcome. good to see you. Shabbat Shalom on the other side of the pond. Glad that you are here. We are blessed by everyone. Thank you all for being here with us. That's right. All right. So let's have a prayer next and then our song. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening lifting your name up on high. So thankful for the opportunity to gather amongst brethren that we can focus on your kingdom, seeking it first in our lives. May your will be done in our lives. May it be revealed to us that we continue to walk in your ways, to be a light on the hill, shining out there for the other nations to see that we can be a pleasing offering to you, lifting that up for your in your name, that we can be an example for those that don't know you, that are looking for a path to walk that we can guide them to you to create and restore a relationship. We're just so blessed for everything that you place within our lives on a daily basis. The things that we take for granted, the things that we don't even know about yet. You are the provider. You are the great I am. We're just so blessed to call you Father, that we can cry out to you with our needs and our praises. Thank you for sending your son to shed his blood for all of us so that we have the opportunity of making it into your gates one day of eternal life, of salvation that we are seeking on this narrow path walk. In your son's name, Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, Laura Lee. Glad Shabbat to see shalom. you and Tresha. And Tresha. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom to both. All right. I yeah. love seeing everyone coming are. in. That's right. That's what you get here in the the deep south of central Tennessee. <laughs> All right. So we've got a song for you this evening by Bethany Bernard, and it is titled Covenant. That's a reoccurring theme that we get throughout the Torah, especially in these portions as the tabernacles created, as well as the various pieces that go along with it, the high priests and the Ten Commandments all of that combining into the covenant that we are still wanting to follow and guard to this day for a perpetual generation, as it says. So I hope you enjoy. Oh, the covenant that we are living in. It's more than rings on hands. It's a yes to the unknown. And in seasons of drought, or when famine comes around, we go to the storehouse, to the one who is always faithful. And we are holding on, holding on. Yes, we are holding on to Him as He is holding on, holding on to. Oh, we can feel the ache 
His sovereign hand turns the page. What was easy to say is now staring us down. Is it till death do us part? Or till a change of heart? Feelings go so far, but where are we when they're gone? We are all alone, all alone. Yes, we are all alone to Him, as He is home. Just a little taste there. It was a few more minutes left. So if you want to hear the end, which is very powerful, I wanted to play it. But you know how YouTube is with the copyrights. So we're going to cut it off there. The song link is in the description below. So be sure to listen afterwards. Really wonderful song. And we are all holding on, are we not? I feel like that is the theme song for our lives right now, holding on, holding on to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause he's holding on to us. And that's just a beautiful thought when we are down, when we're feeling alone, lost, he is always there. Daniel LJ. Welcome. Glad you are here. Shabbat shalom. As well as brother Jamie. Glad Jamie, you are here as well. So Shabbat glad to shalom. See you. to you're you not both. too late. You're on, you're just perfect. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Week 22, Vayachel, and he assembled. This is sometimes a double portion, but this cycle, it actually is split in two, uh, which works well for us because next week is going to be the final portion of Exodus, and that's going to lead us into our Pesach. So we thought that was very fitting timing for how these portions do change throughout the years, different cycles, different portions and double readings. But this is going to cover 35 verse 1 through 38 20. So we know last week's Torah portion, Kitisa, and he commanded. We saw Moshe receive further instructions concerning taxes, foot washing, and Kodesh anointing oil. Yahuwah picks a man filled with the Ruach HaKodesh to be the chief architect of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. And Yahuwah gives a warning concerning the Sabbath. Moshe receives the two stone tablets with the Ten Commandments engraved upon them by the finger of Yahuwah and returns to find the people have already sinned a great sin and had Ahron make a golden calf so they could worship it. And in his anger, Moshe's anger, he breaks those stone tablets. So he goes back up to Mount Sinai for 40 days, begs and pleads and intercedes on behalf of Yasharel. The second, the second set of stone tablets, Moshe has to hew them out of stone so that Yahuwah can once again write the commandments upon them with his finger. So in this week's Torah portion, Vayachel, Moshe descends from Sinai with the second set of tablets, and on the following morning he conveyed to the people to explain Yahweh's instructions regarding building the Mishkan. He started by again reminding them to observe the Sabbath as a day of complete rest, with added provision that they may not obtain the kindle or start a fire on this day. That's right. And I love it's it's how we know how important Shabbat is, the repetition. And and it's just and we're just getting started with this. And it's over, yeah, it's and, only over beginning. and over and over. It's a reoccurring theme 
no doubt, That's throughout right. the entire Torah. That's right. And repetition is a good thing. It is. It, we see here the Sabbath regulations, Exodus 35, 1 through 35, 3. This is where we start, right? This is the very mm -hmm. beginning of this Torah portion. And Moshe gathered all the assembly of the children of Yasharel together and said unto them, These are the words which Yahuwah has commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Shabbat of rest to Yahuwah. Whosoever does work therein shall be put to death. You shall bring no kindle for a fire throughout your habitations until upon the Shabbat. So thinking back, thinking about this, to kindle a fire took quite a bit of work back in biblical times. They couldn't flip a switch and turn their oven or their stove on. Um, so they had to go out. They had to cut a tree or chop up the wood of a tree that had already been cut down. Then they had to carry it back. And chances are it could be a pretty far distance away that they would have to travel to do this. It might have taken several trips as well. A lot of sweat and toil went into obtaining kindle for a fire. Then you have to start the fire. It's not like they had matches or a big lighter to help them do it. But the point here is to not do any work. Don't do any work. And those, those things are work, you know. In those times, it was part of the work needed to run your household. And that was a lot of what their work was. We are not to work or make others work. Mm -hmm. So there may be also a deeper meaning here. And I know we all have talked about this, but it's also about kindling an argument. We need to make sure we carry no arguments, anger or unforgiveness into the Sabbath, into our Shabbat. We should not start any quarrels or disagreements. We need to go into Sabbath with a clean heart, with clean hands, and with righteous intentions. Definitely. Yep. Sherry's right there. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Kindle a fire can also mean start an argument. Mm -hmm. And I've become to realize it's not just start an argument. It's going into that Shabbat, harboring, you know, those negative works of the flesh and our flesh, you know, feeling anger at someone um, or disappointment, you know. Kelly, Shabbat Shalom. So glad to see you. Welcome, as well as Jeffrey. Oh, yes. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, brother. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Mm -hmm. And that y'all rain says, I'd always taken that the fire was for the work on the temple. That's a good way to look at it, too. Do not carry a load on Shabbat. That is true. You know, and as we prepare each prep day, we know the importance of having all of that ready. Even then, when they were gathering the double portion of manna That's right. that would last them through the day of Sabbath because they weren't to gather, they weren't to work on that day of rest. You know, Yah commanded it. They were to do it. That's right. And I see every day as a prep day right now, leading up until um, we see Mashiach returning, right? So prep day for us is to prepare for that Sabbath day rest. So we get mm -hmm. all the things ready. All the, the meals are ready. All the preparations are done. That is how it is every day in our lives to prepare for that Sabbath day rest with him. So keep that in mind as well, that every day is a prep day right now to prepare our hearts and our minds to be in the word, to be looking for him and to be trying to to be forgiven, forgiving so that we don't carry that all of those works of the flesh with us that we're supposed to set down. Right. That's right. You know this. I don't know the exact same, but you're not supposed to go to bed angry. So same concept, you know, make sure that things are resolved, that there's no strife between your brethren. We want our praise and our offering to be received by Yah. And we are told in scripture that if there is a quarrel between you and a brother, 
before you give up your offering, make things right with them. Otherwise, your offering won't be received. And our offerings are our prayers. So we want our prayers to be received and heard. So it's that important. It really is. Now, we love talking about the Sabbath, sharing verses that show the importance of it. I wanted to include these few verses from Jubilees that if you're not reading the Apocrypha, you may not be familiar with this book. You may have never even heard these verses before. Unfortunately, they were taken out of most translations, they but were. they are so powerful and we're blessed to have them. In the Sefer, you can get that actually uh, on the Sefer app. Yep, the app, uh, even eSword. I'm sorry, not this, not, not yeah, the not this on mm-hmm. eSword, but the Sefer app is a great place for this. So first one is Jubilees chapter 111. And many will perish and they will be taken captive and will fall into the hands of the enemy because they have forsaken my ordinances and my commandments and the feast of my covenant and my Sabbaths and my holy place, which I have sanctified for myself in their midst and my tabernacle and my sanctuary which I have sanctified for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it and that it should dwell there. You know, we have seen and are seeing still those forsaking the commands, the world living for themselves, going after their flesh, the abominations that are taking place. We don't want to fall into the hands of the enemy We want that protection that we can obtain by being obedient to these things, the the commandments, honoring the feast days, the Sabbath, for all are set apart and holy to Yahuwah. Continuing in Jubilees chapter 2, 18 through 20, And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath, that we should work six days, but guard the Sabbath on the seventh day from all work and all the angels of the presence, and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes he has bidden us to guard the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. And he said unto us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and these shall guard the Sabbath, and I will sanctify them unto myself as my people. And I will bless them as I have sanctified the Sabbath and do sanctify it unto myself. Even so will I bless them and they shall be my people and I will be their Elohim. I love these verses in Jubilees. I I go to them often to read about the, the Shabbat. It was such a profound reading the first time we read this and realized that the angels in heaven above are set are setting this day apart they are honoring it just as on earth just just like we are you know we want to be those set apart people we want to be called by his name it is so important that we honor the sabbath it's a blessing it's such a blessing i don't know why you would ever want to fight against it because it is it's an absolute joy and a blessing and we know that if yahuwah says he's going to do something he's going to do it and so not he provides these blessings for those people that have chosen to keep it and to guard the sabbath that's right hallelujah it's important So continuing contributions for the tabernacle, Exodus 35, 4 through 35, 10. And Moshe spoke unto all the assembly of the children of Yasharel, saying, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto Yahuwah. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering of Yahuwah, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hairs and ram's skins dyed red and antelope skins and shatim wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil 
and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make it all that Yahweh has commanded. I love that touching on that, you know, in the past weeks, breaking down each particular item and its importance and its meaning, it all tied in to create the tabernacle, just That's as right. we all are part of that body of Yahusha creating that tabernacle. All of our uniqueness and our gifts and talents that have been given are for a specific purpose. That's right. We all fit together. We all have that specific job but we're all very necessary and vital there's not one part more important than the other thank you sherry this is more than just a saying it's scripture <laughs> ephesians 4 26 be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath That's hallelujah right. and we all know i'm sure we've experienced it before the difference if we Go to bed with a grudge or go to bed in peace. What a difference it makes. That's right. So these free will offerings to be made by those who ever so is of a willing heart as a sign of their complete teshuvah, the repentance for the sin of the golden calf. The sin of the golden calf was huge. It required repentance as big as the sin. John 2, 19 through 21, Yahushua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Yahudim, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will you rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. Yes, yes. Such an important concept to understand when we're discussing this. We are now all part of the body of Yahusha, the temple of his body. What do we contribute in the building of his body that we are grafted into? We accept the cleansing of his blood and claim we are saved. But are we changed by that salvation? Change in such a dramatic and drastic way that it is obvious to everyone of it both inwardly and outwardly. Do we realize the many golden calf moments in each of our lives? And have we repented appropriately for them? Have we contributed by removing that which is not pleasing to Yahuwah and not appropriate for the body of Yahusha? Our sins have been paid for. So, we, so do we walk in obedience to the master of heaven and earth? Or are we still walking in our own will and way? Every year as we approach Pesach, this becomes more and more um, important. It's, it's a lesson for each of us, uh, it, for us, for all of us. Have we repented mm -hmm. of those golden calf moments? Have we repented for things that we block out? Like that's what I was talking about this morning. There are things that we say or do wrong that we just block out and think is not that big a deal, but it is. The father sees and hears everything. He, he sees our heart. He knows more about us than we know. So our repentance has to be every bit as big and as huge as the sin. You know, the common expression, my way or the highway, Oof. that's all about the flesh but really it's Yah's way or no way. And That's that right. is the narrow path. And that is the choice we have to make. Are we going to go after our flesh and what the world lifts, you know, dangles over our faces like the carrot and the bunny, you know, to run after. We don't need to focus on those treasures here on earth mm -hmm. because they will fizzle away. They will dissolve back to dust. We want to focus on the kingdom treasure, That's the right. life to come it's but a drop in the bucket what we have as far as life here it it may seem like it's a long time it may seem like it's a short time uh, as we age time does definitely speed up but 
it really is where we don't even, we can't even conceive of what eternity is. Uh, I promise you what we experience here is but a drop in the bucket. You know, Yah provides for the ravens. So of course he's going to provide for his people. You know, there's a difference then from having the things that you need, the, the necessities, That's food, right. shelter, clothing. and clothing. But when you focus on the luxuries of it and having the higher quality and the more quantity, that's chasing after your flesh. The things that you want rather than what you need. When yeah. you focus on the kingdom, those importances really just fade away. It's truly amazing. Uh, when you're focused on things that are pleasing to Yah, those things aren't important anymore. You know, right. Of course, we all want nice things because Yah will provide them when his time is right. And we need to just let those things come from him. So wise hearts made willing, Exodus 35, 23 through 29. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skins of rams and antelope skins brought them. Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought as Yah was offering and every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. Women who were wise to listen to Yahweh focused on his will and delighted in his way. That just stuck out to me and I had to exclaim that like that is amazing women who were wise to listen to Yahweh so continuing 26 and all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair and the rulers brought at onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense the children of Yasharel brought a willing offering unto Yahweh, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, which Yahweh had commanded to be made by the hand of Moshe, not because they were forced, but because they wanted to. They had a willing heart. They wanted to bring the offering and to do the work of Yahweh he asked them to do. I feel like this is to us even today. Are we willing to do his work? Are we putting our hand up and saying, here I am, Father, I'm here, send me. We have to be willing to do his work. Yeah, are we giving our all or are we giving our leftovers? I think of the woman that gave the two mites. It was Everything the, the smallest had. gift given, but yet at the same time, it was the most because it was all that she had. It really was everything that she had. And oh my goodness, that don't make me tear up. <laughs> it gets me. So Psalms, let's read some Psalms. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. Psalms 111 verses 1 through 10. Hallelujah. I will praise Yahweh with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the multitude of the people. The works of Yahweh are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His, works is, his work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Yahweh is gracious and full of compassion. He has given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are truth, are truth and judgment. All his judgments are sure. All his commandments. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's start over in verse 7. The works of his hands are truth and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, 
and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name, Yahusha. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Forever and ever. And I love this. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. If wisdom is what we are seeking and an understanding of Yahweh's word, then a healthy fear of Yahweh is the beginning of that. So that we understand to not take him for granted, to know that he should guide and direct our path. You know, the covenant is a wonderful promise. It's a two-sided agreement. We are to seek after him, obeying his commandments. But he has promised to bless those that do, to watch out, to guard after those, to seek after them. That's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing. I love how it starts. Hallelujah. I will praise Yahweh with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the multitude of the people. I just now that's letting your light that. shine. Yes, yes. So you've added some Sirach Ecclesiasticus 2, 1 through 6. Or actually, I added this in, didn't I? My son, if you come to serve Yahweh, prepare your soul for temptation. Set your heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that you may be increased at your last end. Whatsoever is brought upon you, take cheerfully and be patient when you are changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help you order your way aright, and trust in him. Trust in him. And here we read in Sirach 2, continuing 7 through 12. Ye that fear Yahweh. Wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear Yahweh, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear Yahweh, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in Yahweh and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear? and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him for Yahuwah is full of compassion and mercy long suffering and very pitiful and forgives sins and saves in time of affliction woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goes two ways Wow, Sirach is an incredible book. So it blessed is. to have it. It's become one of our favorites for sure. Shalom. Welcome, Dave. Love and obey Yahweh. Amen. It reminds me of the hymn, Trust and Obey, for That's there's right. no other way. There's no other way. And love that. Shalom, Daniel Hakumba. Hakumba, welcome, brother. Glad you are here. Mm -hmm. Blessings to you. I love Yahweh too, Yanellis. I, I can't quit talking about that or exclaiming that. And the love just continues to grow. That's the, the beauty of seeking after his kingdom and his will, his obedience. It's a love that continues to grow. That's right. Hallelujah for that. So Exodus 36, verse 1, working for Yahweh with the gifts that he has given. It says, Then wrought Betzael and Aholiav, and every wise-hearted man, in whom Yahweh put wisdom and understanding, to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that Yahweh had commanded. And Moshe called Betzael and Aholiav, and every wise-hearted man, in whose heart Yahweh had put wisdom, 
even every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moshe at all the offering which the children of Yasharel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. So I was reminded of Romans 12 verses 4 through 8. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Mashiach, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhorts on exhortation, he that gives, let him do it with simplicity, he that rules with diligence, he that shows mercy with cheerfulness. Hallelujah. And we've each been given one of those gifts. That is the thing. When we reevaluate our blessings in life, many times we're thinking about the things that we don't have or the things that we would like to have. But when we start thinking about all the things that we've been blessed with from the moment we were first born until this very moment, every breath, every heartbeat, you know, the colors, the the things that we can see, the smells and the taste, everything is such a blessing. And we take many of these for granted. Sometimes we don't realize the importance until we've lost it. But it is so important that we continue to give of our unique gifts because Yah has blessed everyone with something. You know, Betzael was blessed with many gifts, but I guarantee you there was other in the group that had a gift that he did not have. So some may seem to hold an important position, but that doesn't mean that you aren't important. You have a special gift as well. And Yah wants you to seek him out so that he can reveal that and show you how to use it. Hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful words. We are so blessed. Amen, HG. Hallelujah. And we're blessed for this fellowship and all of you. You mean so much to us. Wanting to give all. Exodus 36, 6 and 7. And Moshe gave commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. Isn't that what we all want? We want to give so much that Yah says, that's great. That's great. You're, you're We're good. That's what we should be striving for every day is to give everything that we have. Give our self, give, give completely of ourself. And can we really repay Yahusha no. for the gift that no. he gave us? No, no. way. So mm-hmm. we need to work the rest of our days every way we can in an attempt to repay him for that. That's right. And we see here in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, but this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for Elohim loves a cheerful giver. And those last those verses we were seeing in this portion about having a willing heart, having a, um, what was the other word? Willing heart. I guess that was the the main one I'm Mm -hmm. trying to think about, but to do that. So without grudge or without thinking, I'm going to do this just because I have to, but doing it because you want to wanting to give our all that's, That's what he wants. He wants us to want him and to want to please him and to work for him and to follow his will and way. He doesn't want to force us and he won't. That's why he gives us each free will. We have that free will to choose. He wants us to choose him. I choose him. I pray you choose him. (laughs) You know, and many may believe that in order to be a cheerful giver, 
to be pleasing with those gifts, it has to be money that's given. And that's that's one of many things that can be given. But I think of it as the fruit of the spirit, you know, those that that sow. What are you sowing? That's right. What kind of fruit are you sowing? The seeds are so important for now and the future harvest. You will know a man by his fruit. And so we need to be willing to give in all of those aspects. To be kind, to be considerate, mm-hmm. to be forgiven, to offer a hand or a shoulder or an ear um, to people that need it, to, to be there, to care, you know. Amen. All right. So this next portion, we're going to discuss five pattern, a pattern to worship by the way of the tabernacle. We have various pieces broke down here, kind of a example, a bird's eye view of the tabernacle here. You've got the, the entrance gate, the altar of burnt offerings, the laver, the door into the tabernacle, and then within side, the table of showbread, the menorah, the altar of incense. And then, of course, you have the veil, the curtain separating the Ark of the Covenant, which is the Holy of Holies. So the first key is to enter. Worship is a place we enter. The entrance gate of the court was the only way in, just as Messiah is the gate and the door that leads to heaven. The only way. In John 14, 6 and 10, verse 9, it talks about that. To enter worship, we begin by praying and singing praises to Yah. We draw near to him by yielding to him. The next is sacrifice and confess. The altar is a place where we confess our sins. Yahusha has come to be our perfect sacrifice. Without burnt offerings on the bronze altar, there was no way to approach Yahuwah. Without Yahusha's sacrifice on the tree, we would remain separated from him for all eternity. The next is cleansing and forgiveness, representing the the laver, symbolizing our cleansing from sin. It was here that the priests washed their hands and feet before entering the holy place. With thanksgiving and praise, we too much, we too must be cleansed by grace through our faith before entering the holy place. That's discussed in Ephesians 2. The next step, set apart. The word holy, kodesh, simply means set apart. The holy place and the most holy place, the holy of holies, were places that were set apart from all other places because the presence of Yah was uniquely present there. At this step in our worship, We have sacrificed and confessed our sins. We have been cleansed and forgiven. And now we are set apart. Kodesh. Psalms 4.3 and Leviticus 20.26. Inside the holy place you will find the menorah, also called the golden lampstand. The menorah symbolizes Yahusha as the light of men in John 1 verse 4. The table of showbread symbolizes Yah's presence in our lives. Yahusha is the bread of life, John 6, 35. The altar of incense is where we intercede on behalf of others. The sweet fragrance of intercession in the holy place represents our worship to Yahuwah. And the final step is encounter with Yahuwah. Our ultimate goal is an encounter with Yahuwah. Finally, we are ready to encounter the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies, and only once a year. But now, Yahusha is our high priest, read in Hebrews 2, verse 17. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace as often as we desire. Here you will find the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat. Remember the plea of Moshe, show me your glory, as we read last week in Exodus 33:18. In the Holy of Holies, we are left speechless 
as we bask in the wonderful radiance of Yahuwah's glory. Even so, come, Yahusha, come. Maranatha, Revelation 22, 20. That was wonderful. And here's another view of the tabernacle, just to get an idea, breaking it down into the cubits. We know that the cubit was roughly one and a half feet. You know, it was 50 feet wide, 100 cubits long. The bronze altar, the laver, and then the items within the tabernacle, the menorah, the showbread, the golden altar, and then within the Holy of Holies is the Ark of the Covenant. Now, this is just a representation. I know there's various opinions on what the tabernacle could have been like, maybe even round like a dome. Uh, one day we will know, and I'm excited to find out. But it's exciting to get a visual and to understand what this could have looked like and to know that this was created because of everybody's willing gift, all the pieces that were put forth. This was put up and down repetitively. And so this was something that moved with them throughout the wilderness. Mashiach and the tabernacle. So these, these next slides are uh, showing the connection, the correlation between our Mashiach, our Yahusha, and the tabernacle. So Yahusha tabernacled with us, implying the connection between his ministry and the redemptive plan of the Mishkan. In John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the Yahid of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Mishkan and its furnishings were created by Betzael, a young man filled with the Ruach HaKodesh from the tribe of Yehuda, who is described with the same attributes as the creator of the universe in Exodus 35, 31. And he has filled him with the Ruach Elohim in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Proverbs 3, 19 and 20, Yahuwah by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. I love that. Something we pray for constantly is wisdom, understanding and knowledge of his word so that our relationship with him can grow deeper, but that we can also share that with others. Right. And Laura Lee, we are lifting up your son, Brandon. We know it takes great courage for what he is doing. That's right. And we pray blessing, protection over him, and that he may be successful in leading many men to the kingdom. Hallelujah. He is working Yah's will and way. It does take boldness and great courage as Moshe oh, tells yeah. the people. Courage. And that's a great example of Brandon is portraying. Hallelujah. So Betzael came and healed the wound that was caused by the sin of the golden calf, which likewise prefigures healing from the consequences of the original sin. Yahusha came to take our sin to save us from the death due to us concerning our sin. We are deserving of that death sentence. Yahusha came and took it from us. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Elohim is eternal life through Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adonai. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, which is in you, which ye have of Elohim? and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Elohim in your body and in your Ruach, which are Elohim's. Oh, I love those verses. It's almost like our bodies are just a rental. We're leasing them out, and he is the lien holder. You know, I deal with that stuff at work, so that's my analogy. But we are to 
honor our bodies. We are to treat it, make sure that Keep them clean. what we are putting in it is clean and holy and pleasing to him because it is a temple. That's right. Mishiach and the tabernacle continued. So the Mishkan can be seen to prefigure the ministry of Yahushua HaMashiach in various ways. The three-colored gate of the outer court faced east toward the tribe of Yehuda, which served as the only entrance, as you said, to the tabernacle itself. The connection with Yehuda has to do with Shiloh, the promised redeemer and the Mashiach of Yasharel. So Yehusha identified himself as the gate and the point of entry to the presence of Yahweh. John 10, 7 through 10, 9. Then said Yehusha unto them again, Amen, amen, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And in John 14, 6, Yahushua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. Hallelujah. That's become one of my favorite verses. Mm-hmm. So powerful. He is the way that leads to salvation, to everlasting life. Walk in his footsteps. He left the perfect example behind for us to follow. He did. And he left us the instructions of how to do that. He was the instructions that became flesh. That's right. Awesome thought. And Sherry, that's so right. Not only do we want to put things within our temple that are clean, because if we're not, we're not going to be speaking clean. And so the words that come out of us need to be clean as well. That's right. Pleasing to the most high. Life and death are in the tongue. Exactly. And I, what is it? The verse where, you know, the abundance of the heart, the mouth out speaks. Of, out so of the abundance of whatever heart. we're putting in, it's going to come out. Or what we have abundantly within us. Mm-hmm. We want that to be good and fruitful, not exactly wicked. All right. So let's look into the pieces here of the tabernacle. First, we have the copper altar was the first object visible in the outer court and represented the various offerings that were given to Yahuwah, including the daily offering of the yearly lamb with wine and unleavened bread. Yahushua is seen as the fulfillment of the sacrifices by his finished work upon the tree for our salvation as the lamb of Elohim. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Mashiach as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. That's what I call fulfilling scripture. (laughs) Well, it just, it gets, it has to get you in your Ruach. It has to get you in the deepest part of you to realize that even before you existed, he was already preordained to die for you and to die for me, to save Mm -hmm. us. The father had already, he already knew we would need him. And he came willingly. And his blood held him to that tree, or his love for us held him to that tree. Mm -hmm. So next we see the copper basin. Washing in the copper basin was the means by which access to the holy place was granted and may represent cleansing or teshuvah or baptism, water immersion, mikveh. We know that Yahushua cleanses us, right? In John 3, 3 through 3, 6, Yahushua answered and said unto him, Amen, amen, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Nicodem, Nicodemon, Nicodemus. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? 
can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahushua answered, Amen, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Ruach, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Ruach is Ruach. In Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Hallelujah. You know, it's fitting to describe the Torah as the living water because the Torah became flesh, became Messiah, who is everlasting water. We know that the word is what needs to wash us clean. The world will cause uh, our feet to become dirty. And we need that constant washing of the word so that we can be presentable in the tabernacle. Amen. Amen. So next we have the altar of incense within the tent. And these may not be necessarily in order, but within the tabernacle, we have three sections, the holy place, two parts, and the holy of holies, one part. Within the holy place were three furnishings, the altar of incense, the menorah, and the table of showbread. The altar of incense was the central object of the holy place, situated directly in from of the parashet, or the curtain, that separated the ark of the covenant from the holy place. The incense represented the aroma or fragrance of prayer and sacrifice in service to Yahuwah. And I love thinking about that, that this incense was pleasing to Yahuwah. He wanted that aroma and that fragrance. Our prayers are represented by that fragrance, pleasing to Yah. Hallelujah. Revelation 8, 3 through 5. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all Kodashim upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the Kodashim, ascended up before Elohim out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Wow, and we see the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the Kodashim. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Your prayers are important. They're powerful and they're needed for all of us. We are to be interceding for one another. That's right. Let Yahweh hear your cries. So here we see the menorah represented the divine light and was the only source of light in the tabernacle itself. The central branch of the menorah was called their westernmost lamp because it faced the Ark of the Covenant. Unlike the other lamps, the westernmost lamp burned continuously and therefore represented the eternal light. And I love seeing this picture of what we surmised that the menorah looked like. It's quite amazing and beautiful. I can't imagine how how absolutely beautiful it was. You know, probably roughly the, the same height as Ahron and the other priests. Oh, it's and very large. It says here it was 160 centimeters, or is that just the top part? I think it says about six, six foot, feet, two inches or wow. so. All of one piece of beaten gold. Wow. Incredible. So John 1, 1 through 1, 4. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Eth Elohim and Elohim was the word. The same was in the beginning with Eth Elohim. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. In John 8, 12, then spoke Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ugh, I love that. I love mm -hmm. reading these verses. You know, that light is for those that are walking 
on his path, in his way, that have stepped out of the darkness of the world. That light is a blessing and a gift to shine day and night through all the nations so that they can see that they can be drawn to the path that we are trying to show others that we have been blessed by finding. Hallelujah. All right. Next we have the table held the, t- the bread of presence, which represent the manna and Elohim's provision for his people. John six thirty three through 35. For the bread of Elohim is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Adonai evermore, give us this bread. And Yahushua said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. I'm loving all of these connections representing Yahushua because he is, we all create the body. He is the head of the tabernacle, and all these pieces have a connection to him. That's right. Shalom, Rebecca. Shabbat shalom. Welcome. Glad you are here with Mm -hmm. us this evening. So the veil or the parashat separating the holy place from the holy of holies is likened to the body of Yahushua that was broken of us. Hebrews 9.20, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which Elohim has enjoined to you. Hebrews 10.10 10 through 10.14, By the which we will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahushua HaMashiach once for all. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Elohim. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 20. By a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. And in Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And we know that was at the moment that Yahushua called out and said, it is finished, it is done. So that veil was torn in half and no longer was there that separation between us and Yahweh. That one-on-one relationship that we have with the Most High. And finally, we have the Ark of the Covenant And in particular, the mercy seat represented the throne of Elohim, where propitiation for our sins was made. 2 Kings 19.15 And Yizik Yahu prayed before Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah Elohai of Yasharel, which dwells between the Kerovim, you are the Elohim, even you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahushua, the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In 1 John 2, 1-3, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua HaMashiach, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for all, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we guard his commandments. Hallelujah. We know him if we guard his commandments. That small little word. 
has such huge meaning. That verse has really taken on new meaning over the few last few years and is such a blessing. We want to be obedient. We want to guard those commandments. We want to follow Yah's way and will with a willing heart. And that's what he wants of each and every one of us for us to be willing to do that. Amen. So the high priest and his garments likewise are richly symbolic of the ministry of Yahusha, including the elaborate ordination process that required the anointing of oil and the application of sacrificial blood to upon the priest's hands feet, and forehead. The clothing also imputed righteousness that allowed access into the divine presence of Yahweh's grace. In Hebrews 4, 14 through 4, 16, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahushua, the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Such important verses. We wanted to read it twice. I thought that was in there twice. <laughs> all right. Repetition. That's and right. It's key. Yahweh wanted it read twice. So there you go. So we are going to finish with another wonderful psalm, 46, verses 1 through 11. Yahweh is our fortress. It says, Elohim is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of Elohim, the holy place of the tabernacles of El Elyon. Elohim is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Elohim shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Yahweh Sevaoth is with us. The Elahai of Yaakov is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of Yahweh. What desolations he has made in the earth. He makes wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in sunder. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am Elohim. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahuwah Sevaoth is with us. The Elahai of Yaakov is our refuge. Selah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Be still and know that I am Elohim. Wow. How powerful. And amen, the Kledi say, we bow down in humbleness and implore his forgiveness. How excellent is his name. Amen, 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 and hallelujah. We want to come to him giving of ourselves with humility, with a humble heart, a cheerful heart, so that those offerings, those gifts can be received and that they can benefit the multitude. Hallelujah. So hallelujah. Thank you so much. We got a great group here tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Such a blessing to us. And we are looking forward to continuing this Sabbath on with fellowships tomorrow, being in the word, in prayer and praise. And we hope that you have a blessed evening, a blessed Sabbath rest, that the Father be able to dwell with you and that you feel his presence and that you are able to go out there and plant those seeds of righteousness, giving off the fruit of the Spirit. Absolutely. So please do like, subscribe, and share to our channel if you would. It helps get this message out there. We would appreciate that support. 
please download our app if you have not had a chance to do so. We have an app now on Google, Apple, Amazon, Roku, I believe even now Fire TV and Google TV. So you can find all of our content there. We are adding new things all the time. So check that out. If you are interested in our PESOC gathering, we are also meeting March 22nd through the 25th at Edgar Evans, roughly about an hour east of Nashville. Check it out. You can register on our app. You can email us, reach out to us on Telegram. You can find us any in multiple ways. So contact us, however, <laughs> is best for you. You can leave us a comment here. Yeah, comment after the show. If you're not in the live chat, you can always leave us a comment on the presentation itself. So hallelujah was a, a great gathering. We appreciate you all. Blessings. Shalom. Hallelujah. Blow the shofar.